Praise the Lord. Good evening and welcome to another session, another Bible study for all of you that are tuning in. I couldn't wait to get back here this week uh, because of all of the great things God has done in our lives. Now, you need to know, as you come, I need you to drop all the pretense. I need you to drop some of your holy, you know, be holy enough. Not to be judgmental, because the reality is we're going to be bridging that gap between us understanding, communicating with God through humor, through laughter. Even in serious situations, we're going to find out the power of laughter. So if you wonder, you've tuned into a Bible study that you need to call someone and let them know that we're on. If you're on our YouTube, hit that bell, subscribe. Let us know if you've ever been on our broadcast before and you've seen some of the materials, some of the teachings, you know, some of the, ser some of the sermons, then you know that we're going to be sticking into and staying with the Word of God. But tonight's going to be a little different. Tonight is going to be something funny, something that we hope you understand that God has a sense of humor. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray with you. Father God, I thank you for this night. I ask you would bless everyone who is joining in. I ask you would bless, God, those who are in need of understanding the power that you've equipped our bodies with through laughter. And I ask, God, that you would allow us to speak to you tonight as you speak to us in an exchange that keeps us free from stress and brings us to a place of deliverance. Everybody here, get ready, get ready, get ready. We're going into this Bible study. It's entitled, The Healing Power of Laughter. And that's what we're going to be talking about. Somebody named Mavis Pickett. You can check her story. She is a, a Canadian stand-up comic. But she also understands what happens when life sends you a turn and everything goes dark. You see, Mavis had a 30-year-old daughter named Mavis Ann who died suddenly after she had gone on a skiing trip. When she was skiing, she tripped and stumbled and fell off of a 30-meter cliff and died while she was skiing. It threw Mavis into... All of this, uh, she was grieving, and it threw her into this place of darkness, a place where her soul could not find air. She was crying uncontrollably, and she never thought she would recover. As a matter of fact, life wasn't fun anymore. And she found out, I don't, ooh, thank you, I gotta stop there and just say this, life wasn't fun anymore. That's something we say life wasn't fun, right? Life is supposed to be this grand journey. But when these precarious, dark, uh, un unexpected things happen in life, they affect all of us differently. And it's only the grace of God you're here now. But anyway, Mavis decided, you know, I just don't know if I can live anymore. Well, two years later, she stumbled into uh, a college, Nagar College in Vancouver. And there... She thought it was an eight-week course she was enrolling in on how to deal with grief, grief through humor. Well, instead, the teacher walked over to the board, David Granier, and he wrote on the board, Stand-Up Comedy Workshop. Mavis was freaked out. She said, I'm leaving. I'm getting out of here. But David said, no, stick around, stick around. Well, I need you to know that a few weeks later, she became the honor student in the class. She had honed this persona in her routine of this ditzy senior woman who was having trouble keeping pace with a fast-paced world. It was tremendously funny. Everybody in the class loved it. When the class ended, she turned pro. Then she went out and started doing gigs under her name, being a stand-up comedian. And laughter kept falling out of her, and laughter kept falling out of her. And the title of her message, the title of the message, if you go and reference her, she'll tell you laughter saved my life. Because she said my muse, or my thought, as I was going through all of this, was my daughter Mavis. 
She was funny. She was she was outgoing. She had that spirit, and she could deliver a punchline. I know she'd be proud of me as her mom. She would close every show with this tagline. Here's what she would say: "Say good night, Mavis." Everybody thought they were talking about her, but she was really talking about her daughter. I know it isn't funny to start, but it's really an understanding of the power of laughter, what we're going to be talking about. Many of us don't realize, she said, laughter saved my life, and I mean it. I'm telling somebody right now that laughter is the nexus for you getting out of the situation that you're in now if you learn to laugh. People who laugh have a joyous life. People who laugh have a better life. People who laugh have a healthier life. People who are not stuck on themselves and are miserable find themselves being blessed. What does laughter do? Laughter can come in and work through any situation you're going through if you learn how to be a person who knows how to laugh. After that tragedy, she became a comedian, and I want you to know that her profession, she was 64 years old when she started, took her into this longevity of life. And the one thing I need you to know is God is funny. God has humor. We were made in the image of God, so we have humor. Don't be such a stuck-up person. You got to learn how to laugh. Listen to Proverbs 11.22. Like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman who shows no discretion. Now, God had Solomon write that. What it's saying is, now you know a pig with a gold earring in his snout doesn't look that beautiful. But God compared that to a beautiful woman who has no discretion, who, who is very fast and very revealing and does not treat herself with honor. God uses humor and irony and sarcasm to try to get his point across. And it seems that we don't understand what God is trying to say. He breaks up, watch me tonight, he breaks up some of the, some of the darkest, some of the most tense situations by laughter, but you got to see it in order to understand it. We're going to talk about some funny stories from the Bible, and I want you to catch them, and we're going to give you some pointers on how you can be a person who knows how to heal through laughter. Are you ready? How do you heal yourself through laughter? First of all, let's look at some familiar scriptures that one you may be familiar with and some you may not be familiar with, and look at the scriptural implications of laughter. Proverbs 17, 22. A cheerful heart is good like medicine, but a broken spirit saps a person's bones and his strength. What the Bible is telling us is if you can keep your heart cheerful, if you can laugh, your spirit soars up. And when your spirit soars up, then there's healing that takes place in your body. And we're going to talk about that. And what I need you to know is when you laugh, that's the blessing that you get. All right, I got to take you with me again. You know, uh, remember, jokes are just jokes. They're just for fun. But stay with me tonight. A wife told her husband, uh, they were avid golfers, and they were riding back from the golf course. And the wife had nothing better to do than strike up this conversation. And the wife told her husband, she said, if you remarry, uh, I'm just thinking, are you going to let her stay in my house? And the man was driving, he said, honey, I don't know. I mean, it, it's a new house. I, I'll change the furniture or something. You ask me a question, I don't know. I, I'll try eventually to get another house. So they're riding along, and then she thinks of, well, if you remarry, will you let her drive my car? And I was just saying, well, the car is paid for. I mean, if I have to, you know, I guess I'll just get another car. Will you stop? They're riding along, and then she looks in the back and sees her golf clubs, and she said, honey, if you remarry, I know you're not going to let her use my golf clubs. The husband said, no, she can't use your clubs. She left-handed. Anyway, <laughs> a man who did not pay too much attention to his wife while she was alive actually started missing her. I mean, he treated her badly. Started missing her, and he said, it was getting so bad, he said, I got to find a way to get in touch with her. So he went out and actually found a psychic. When he got to the psychic, they joined hands, and all of a sudden, all of this noise came in, and he heard as the breeze was blowing through the seance, he heard the familiar voice of his wife. He said, honey, is that you? She said, yes my husband. 
He said, oh, oh my God, I really wanted to talk to you. He said, how are you doing? Are you doing well? And then she said, I'm doing better than I was when I was with you. And then the man said, oh my God, heaven must be great. She said, who said I'm in heaven? All right, let's move on. I guess you'll catch that later. This little boy got mad at his teacher. And his teacher was trying to teach a lesson. He was in the back of the, back of the room, mad, folding his hands. And the teacher was teaching a lesson to the kids. And she said, what does um, a chicken give you? And the kids said, I know, me. And the teacher said, yes. He said, what does a pig give you? And one of the kids said, bacon. And then the teacher said, what does the big fat cow give you? And a little boy mad in the back said, homework. Okay, we're moving on. We're not going to stay there. You got to lighten up. You got to learn to laugh. That's what this class is about. Let me give you some scriptures to support the fact that you need to learn how to laugh. Job chapter 8. Go there with me. Laughter. I want you to write this down. Laughter helps you recover. Are you going through something right now? Laughter can send a speedy recovery to your life. Go with me to Job. I'm going to be going with you tonight in real time to these scriptures because I have so many of them. So just bear with me as we go there. Job chapter 8. I want you to grab your Bible while I'm doing this so you're following along with me. <laughs> Think back how kind of was homework. Okay, that's funny to me. I don't know what's going on with you guys. All right, Job chapter 8. Look, listen what it says in Job chapter 8. Then answered Bildad the Shumite and said, How long wilt thou speak these things? How long will show your words of thy mouth be like a strong wind? Doth God pervert judgment? Or doth God Almighty pervert justice? And if you go with me to the 21st verse, because I don't want to stay in this text forever, because we got a lot of stuff to cover. In verse 21, it says, uh, let's start at verse 20. Behold, God will not cast away a perfect man. Don't miss that, verse 20. Neither will he help the evildoers, till he fill thy mouth with laughing and thy lips with rejoicing. They that hate thee shall be clothed with shame, and the dwelling place of the wicked shall come to naught. Bildad was one of Job's better uh, comforters. He didn't come with a, a lot, as many accusations as the other as the other comforters did, accusing Job. But what Bildad said here, and this is what I know lets you recover, if you can laugh. What thou compare laughter to? Laughter is to you having what you had before you lost it. He said a quick route to it. He said, when you get what you had, because God will not leave or cast off a perfect man. Well, we know the word perfect means someone who's trying to live for him. God is saying right now, I'm talking to somebody. God said you can recover everything you have if you would just learn how to laugh. Look what God does. Look what he's calling a full recovery. In that 21st verse, a full recovery is when your mouth is filled with laughter and your lips are rejoicing. What am I saying? Somebody in here, can you think of when the last time you had a belly laugh? When's the last time you tried to make someone else laugh? When's the last time you hung with somebody who was trying to be funny? You need laughter in your house, laughter in your life, laughter in your marriage, laughter wherever you go. You need to make sure that you lighten up your situation. Psalms 126 and 2. Go to Psalms 126. So we know, first of all, laughter will help you recover. That's a good reason for somebody to laugh right there. Your recovery will come faster than you sitting around moping and, and being sad. And we read the scripture that a cheerful heart doeth good like medicine, but a broken spirit will kill you. A broken spirit will keep you down. A broken spirit will help you not recover. Somebody here, you've been so mean because you haven't learned to laugh. Write this text down. This will help you. Psalms 126 and 2. Laughter breaks bondages. Wow. Laughter actually breaks bondages. Let's look at Psalms 126 and verse 2. Then, let's start at verse 1. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. Then was our mouth 
filled with laughter. Are you catching this? He says, this is actually historically, the context is the children of Israel, we believe theologically, when they were released from Babylonian captivity, when they came back from Babylonian captivity, they actually said, after getting free, because God set us free, said when God turned our captivity, our mouth was filled with laughter. The Lord has great things, watch me, in store for those who shout, for those who rejoice, for those who laugh. God said, I can break the bondages in your life if you would have laughter instead of... How many, how many know that there are times when I've just been screaming and hollering and I've been mad and I've been angry, but nothing happened? What if I laugh? It seems like everything melts away. The problems go away because that's the kind of God we serve. God plays laughter as the power that can bring me back. Laughter can make you apologize. Laughter can make you feel better about your situation. Watch this. Laughter dries tears. Go to Luke chapter 6, verse 21. Laughter can actually dry your tears. Luke chapter 6, verse 21. And it says, And he lifted up his eyes, on the disciples and said, Blessed are ye, I'm reading, I'm reading verse 20, Blessed are, be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger, for ye shall be filled. When we look at that text, it's talking about be filled with the joy and laughter of God. You shall be filled with the things that God has for you. So laughter can dry your tears and fill your life with a blessing. Let's look at or review some of the things that happen physiologically to your body when you laugh. So right now you got high blood pressure, um, uh, you got kidney problems, you have uh, headaches, you get headaches, you get migraines. Listen to what the doctors say. This is spiritual and biblical evidence that when you laugh, something happens. Look, laughter relaxes the whole body. A good, hearty laugh relieves you physically. Laughter boosts your immune system. You can take all the vitamin C you want, but when you laugh, you already secrete hormones that go into your immune cells and fight with immune-fighting antibodies. So listen, so God is saying, if you laugh, those things will take place within your body. He sends and releases endorphins, and come on, get that, get that frown off your face. That's what's wrong. You're killing yourself from being so mean when you need to learn the power of laughter. Look at this one. Laughter protects your heart. Laughter improves the functions of the blood vessels and increases blood flow, which can help protect you against heart attack and other cardiovascular problems. Laughter burns calories. I know nobody wants to replace this, but I put this one in. You don't burn a lot of calories, but laughter can keep you moving. Laughter takes away anger. And when it takes away anger, it takes away all the things anger does to your body. Laughter may even help you live longer. A study found, here's a good one, people who laugh, in a study that was done in Norway, they get less cancer than folk who were dealing with cancer. And those who were battling with cancer, once they started laughing, they got better faster. You can't make this up, but just in case you don't know God is funny, I want you to go with me to, let's look at the text, go to Numbers chapter 22. Let's look at Numbers. So I'm going to show you, uh, Psalms 2 tells us God laughs, right? But let's go to Numbers, and let's see some humor in the Bible. Now, in order to find the humor in the Bible, you have to open your mind and your imagination and, and understand the context of that day, but see what would happen if we were standing there when this thing happened. Are you with me? Numbers 22. Let's see. Uh, let's see what verse we're going to read. Okay. Go with me. I had to. Here it is. Go to verse 21. Go to verse 21 with me. Are you with me? Verse 21. And Balaam rose up, when Numbers 22, verse 21, in the morning and saddled his donkey and went with the princes of Moab. And God's anger 
was kindled because he went. And the angel of the Lord stood in the way for the adversary against him. Now he was riding upon his donkey, and his two servants were with him. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way, and his sword drawn in his hand, the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. Now you got to see this. He's controlling the donkey, but when the donkey saw the angel with the sword, the donkey decided we not going in that direction, and the donkey drove over in the field. Now, can you see the picture? He's trying to control the donkey, and the donkey takes off and runs into a field. Oh, we're not done yet. Watch this. As he was riding, he turns the donkey back. He smacked the donkey. He beat the donkey with a stick. Let me go to another translation here so you can really hear what happened. Um... It says, and he turned, Jehovah standing in the way, and the sword drawn in his hand, the donkey turned aside out of the way and went to the field. Now watch this, and Balaam smote the ass and turned her the other way. Then the angel of Jehovah stood in a narrow path between the vineyards. Now watch this whole scene. God is steady moving the angel about, trying to block the way so he can't come, and then all of a sudden, Balaam starts beating on his donkey. Look what happened. It says the angel stood there, and the wall being on this side, and it says the donkey saw Jehovah and thrust herself into a wall. So this time the donkey just ran into the wall. Didn't go into the field, ran into the wall. Can you imagine what Balaam was thinking? Because the Bible said she crushed his foot against the wall. So he was angry. And Balaam looked at the ass. Now watch this. And Jehovah, verse 28, opened the mouth of of the donkey. Now, when I was growing up, there was a show called Mr. Ed. I was a little teeny kid. It was syndicated by then. But there was a show where the talking horse, we laughed. A talking donkey, we laughed. But God has a sense of humor. And I know we look at this from the spiritual side, but think how you would feel if all of a sudden you're riding the donkey and the donkey starts talking to you. Tell me that's not funny. And look what the donkey said. He looked at Balaam and said, um, Why are you hitting me? Why did you hit me three times? And Balaam said unto the donkey, Because you mocked me. You didn't go the way I want. Uh, I would, there were a sword in my hand, I would have killed you. And the donkey said, Come on, Balaam, am I not the same donkey you've been riding all your life? Why in the world do you want to beat me this day? Was I ever, did I ever do anything that was wrong against you? And he was just talking and saying, hey, Balaam, don't you know, man, this is me. You understand what's going on? And he said, no. And Jehovah opened Balaam's eyes and saw the angel of Jehovah standing there. Now, I don't know about you. Say what you want. God could have done anything but make that donkey talk. But because God also uses, I believe, a little humor to break up a situation, he had the donkey talk. And I'm going to tell you right now. If we were riding along, and we don't have donkeys now, but say you had your dog, and your dog started talking to you, you know what happened? If you ran to the church to tell me I was walking my dog, and my dog started talking to me, first of all, I'm going to think you crazy for telling me your dog was talking, but you know what else I'm going to do? Whoever I go tell this to afterward, we're going to get us a good laugh off of you. Yeah, she said her dog was talking. Do you don't think that God who is smarter than all of us, knew what he was doing. I believe God, when he gets into the human, survive, you know, helping us survive as humans, I believe that you know, God is, is so omniscient, he is so intelligent, that he has to find ways to interact with us that's going to be a part of us. And part of what we do is we laugh. We have fun. And God laughed and had fun. You don't think that's a good one? Go to 2 Kings. A talking donkey... Is funny. And go to second king. So you haven't looked at it that way because we get deep when we're looking at this. And nothing wrong with that, trying to find the, the word of God. But you know yourself that God must be awful funny to have a donkey start talking to you. Go to second kings. Second kings. And let's look at chapter 2. Second kings chapter 2. And we will look at verse 23 to 24. I wrote this down because this is funny. You got to see this yourself. This is funny. 
And he, meaning Elijah, verse 23, went up then from Bethel, and as he was going up by the way, there came forth young lads out of the city and mocked him and said unto him. Here goes the joke. Go thou, you bald head man. Go up from here, you old bald head man. Hey, look at the bald head man. Stop. Why would God, <laughs> well, I know, you know, we, bald, you know, getting the bald uh, hairdo is, is a style now, you know, I got people have bald heads. Okay, but this was funny. Hey, look at the bald head man, the kids running around. Why would God allow that in the Bible? Because I'm trying to tell you that some situations, if we don't look so deep, that's funny in the sense we think it's mean, it's cruel to be mocking somebody, you know, but they were saying, look at the bald head man, but that's not the funny part. Get out of here, old bald head man. And when he saw them and cursed them in the name of Jehovah, here it is. Here's the funny part. God allowed two bears to come out of the woods and chase the kids. Look at it. It says the bears came out of the woods and tore the 40 lads and two lads of them. Tear them, meaning that the bear attacked them. God said, here's the scene. Now, we know if someone was teasing somebody and all of a sudden the bears came out and attacked them, why couldn't God do anything else than having the bears? Because when God actually shows us humor in Scripture, he uses irony. The irony was they were teasing him and it came back on them. He uses uh, hyperbole. Hyperbole is when a situation that you think should go one way goes another way. He uses sarcasm. We saw Elijah last week, you know, t uh, picking at people, laughing at people. But if you don't think that's funny, that is funny. And I want you to see one more. Go to Mark chapter 10, uh, verse 46. Go to Mark chapter 10, verse 46. Mark 10, 46. So this is a text about the blind man, Bartimaeus, who when he saw Jesus, he began to holler, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And if you look, verse 46 says, they came to Jericho, and as he went out from Jericho with the disciples and a great multitude, the son of Timaeus, Bartimaeus, a blind beggar, was sitting by the wayside, and when he heard that it was Jesus of Nazareth, he began to cry out and say, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And many rebuked him that he should hold his peace, but he cried out the more, thou son of David, have mercy on me. And Jesus stood still and said, call him. And they called him, saying unto him, Be of good cheer, arise, he calls thee. The funny thing is, if you can see the picture, if you understood the context, blind Bartimaeus was sitting there, and he was yelling, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. I believe he was yelling it more and more. They told him to stop. I don't know if they ran over to him inside. I believe he turned to the side. Can you see somebody putting their hand over his mouth? Saying, quit calling the master. And he said, Jesus! And he pulled the hand down. What I'm saying is, the scene is such that God allows us to see his determination, but the way God uses it is, my Lord man said, no, I'm sorry. I'm not setting up. This is my healing. I'm getting ready to get mine. And if we were sitting there, that's how I get to see the humor in it, and Blind Bartimaeus was maybe on his couch, and the disciple was coming over to his bed trying to get him, and he was scooping away, and he wouldn't shut up, and they were trying to make him shut up. That is a funny scene. You have to see the power of humor when God says what humor does in our life. Let me show you one more. I want you to go to Proverbs chapter 15, verse 13, to tell you some of the practical applications of humor and what humor does in our life. Proverbs 15, 13. Are you ready? A glad heart makes a happy face. A broken heart crushes the spirit. When you don't understand the power of laughter, if you're looking at what I'm saying and it seems like to stretch you, then you have not seen what is funny. I was on the telephone today 
someone called me and they were talking and they were going on and they were going on and they were going on and they were calling me to inform me that application I filled out had worked. I'm trying to study. I want them to hang up and I'm getting more angry as they talk and they're going on and on. And then he said, but your money will be here in three weeks. He said, let me go down this list and then tell you, you know, what has to happen. But then the man deviated again and started telling me all kind of other stuff about his family members, about everybody. And he was a pleasant guy. And we sit and laugh. But I'm going to tell you, the funny part was that I was ready to hang up on the man until he said, your money will be here in three weeks. Do you see how laughter broke that situation, because I don't like to be on the phone long, but him and I laughed, and I guarantee you we talked for 35 minutes on the phone. But the reason we talked for 35 minutes is because he said, your money will be here in three weeks. Flipped it over, and I was joyous. The joy broke the situation, and I met a pretty good guy on the phone. So all I'm saying is, when you learn the power of laughter, it can bless your heart to the point that you can be healed. The Bible talks about cheer and rejoicing. And I'm going to teach you how to, how to practice some of this stuff, how to rejoice and how to make sure that there is laughter in your heart. If you look at um, Proverbs 18.14, and I'm going, to, I'm going to pull that up. Proverbs 18.14, write it down. Why I should laugh. You should laugh, laugh because maybe your money will be here in three weeks. Proverbs 18, 14. The spirit of a man will sustain his sickness, but a broken spirit who can bear. I want to get serious for a minute. If you're at a place that no, you don't have any joy in your life, the life you're living you don't like, and it continually and continually bears down on your spirit, you get up in the morning and you don't have you, you don't understand why your life is at such a dead end place. I know this sounds strange, but mark my words, turn into a person who loves to laugh. Turn into a person whose heart is filled with cheer. Because the Bible tells us in Proverbs 18:14, right now, the spirit of a man will sustain you through your sickness. The spirit. If there's a joyful spirit. But a broken spirit will get you into mental situation. I want to talk to you now about your mental health. I want to talk to you now about spiritual warfare. I want to talk to you now about fear. I want to talk to you now about anxiety, about being left alone, being afraid of the dark. I know we're grown. We don't want to talk about that. But I want to talk to you how you can transpose your life, how you can trans transition yourself into a position that you are a different person when it comes to the things, the se come on, quit, the secret fears, the secret things that you try to fill your life with everything else so you don't have to face them. Watch how laughter can facilitate a brand new place of joy. It can knock that fear out your heart. It can knock that struggle out of your life because laughter handles emotional fear. So make sure you write that verse down, Proverbs 15, 13, and Proverbs 18, 14. Come on, this is a Bible study. I want you to see this. But look what happens when you laugh if you're in a situation that your mental health is challenged. Are you ready? Laughter stops distressing emotions. Different than just the immune system. Laughter, as I told you, when that man was getting on my nerves and I was in distress because he was talking too long and I'm not a rude person, hadn't gotten to that point where I was going to hang up on him, but the reality is the laughter broke the emotions. I got off of that phone stress-free. Secondly, laughter helps you relax, watch this, and energize. You don't even know it. While you're laughing, all the benefits I just said of the health of your body is good, but then your whole mind re-energizes and you're ready to tackle another day. I know people that say, I'm just tired, I'm just worn down. That's your emotions, that's your mental fight, but laughter can help you break through that. Watch this, laughter shifts the perspective. I just said that. It'll take your mind off the problem 
and put you into a position where the laughter can heal you. We found out last week when I was talking to you about Norman Cousins and what happened with him, how he laughed and the blessing that came from his healing. When the doctor said there was no way, he locked himself in a hotel and just started watching funny movies. And he found himself blessed. Here is the one that nobody, that is a hidden benefit that we talk about all the time. But laughter draws you closer to other people. Nobody wants to be around a mean person. Nobody wants to see a person who never smiles. You're, the only person you're impressing is yourself. Nobody wants to be around you, and when you come around, you bring gloom and doom. Where is the laughter? Find something funny. Tell me something funny. Tell me something that will help break the monotony of this life. That's how we bless each other. I recommend that we have fun, because Ecclesiastes, you know that verse, said there's a time to laugh. Man, a time to laugh is when God is getting ready to bring the blessing into our life. And when the blessing comes in our life, that's when we know how God uses different situations. Uh, look at irony. Irony. God uses irony. It's the it's the flip the situation. It's funny, but it flips the situation. Uh, you heard the joke where the little girl was talking to the Sunday school teacher, and she asked the teacher. She said, um, "Can a man be swallowed by a whale?" And the teacher said, "No. That's crazy." Well, can't be, man can't be swallowed by a, man, by a whale. And she gave the whale's anatomy and why he couldn't do it. And the little girl said, well, uh, Jonah was swallowed by a whale. And the teacher said, no, no man can be swallowed by a, man, by a whale. So the little girl said, you know what? When I get to heaven, I'm going to ask Jonah myself. And he, he said to the teacher, he said, what about if Jonah's not in heaven, the teacher said. Then the little girl said, well, then you can ask him. See, the irony is, you're trying to refute what God said happened, and it turned into a joke that flipped the script on you. Okay, I'll give you another one. Let me give you a biblical one you can understand. Jesus was naming his disciples in the Gospel of Mark. You didn't think it funny? And in Mark 13, I believe that's the text where Jesus was naming his disciples, that he actually called... It was in Mark 3. He called James and John the sons of thunder. Now we look at that, but have we, have, we, have, we, have we looked at that to the point that we analyzed that and see what he was talking about? Jesus was having fun with sarcasm. He said, look, he was naming them. Uh, I want Matthew. I want Mark. I want you. Then he looked over there at James and John. He said, okay, you two, uh, bring the sons of thunder. That Jesus was having, he was being sarcastic, but he was being funny. Jesus had a sense of humor. You think Jesus turned water to wine without laughing? You think Jesus went to all the parties and sat down and, and, and sat down and had talks with wine givers and with the publicans and with the street people, and Jesus didn't have a good personality? Nobody wanted to be around him. There are things Jesus did in Scripture that will let you know Jesus was sort of a jokester also. You think about it. Look at some of the names he called the scribes and Pharisees. He called Herod an old fox. It might seem something, nothing to us, but Jesus was actually making jokes as he was speaking because Jesus knew the total makeup. He was as much man as he was God. He was as much God as he was man. But because he was made like us, he was filled with the same things we were filled with. And Jesus had a sense of humor. I'm telling you right now, somebody's missing a blessing because you don't laugh and have a sense of humor. The reason he called them sons of thunder is not funny. If we were to look at the ninth chapter of Mark, we found out. So Jesus must have knew this already. Remember, they, were, they saw some man healing. And it was in the name of Jesus. But they were mad because the man wasn't healing or a part of them. And Jesus said, leave them alone. And they started fussing. Remember, uh, they wanted to know, can I sit on the right hand? And I sit on the left hand? They were, he, caught, he was trying to make a joke, but he was also telling them about their uh, personalities and about their character. You know how you have a joke that says, like, oh yeah, those two over there, that's the sons of thunder. They might have thought that funny. But I bet you Jesus thought it was funny because that's what Jesus does. How about a joke on a preacher? Acts chapter 20. Right? Acts chapter 20. This might not be funny in the text, but if you go to Acts chapter 20, here's a funny one. Paul was preaching in the upper room. And 
When Paul was preaching, well, I'm going to go there. I want, to, I want you to actually see. I want to show you a verse. I know the scripture, you know well, but I want you to see it in context because it'll help you see that God did not have to put this in, but he did it because it's funny. Acts chapter 20, um, let me talk, talk about seven verses. Oh, wait, 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 I'm in the wrong text. I'm in the wrong text. Is it earlier? Hold on. See, this just came to me. I didn't write this one down. That's why I put in the chat the text of this story because I know it. Anyway, we'll talk about it. Then I'll find, I'll find the scripture for you. But in Acts, I think it's the 20th chapter. I don't know why I said 20. But anyway, Jesus, Paul was preaching. And he was preaching. And he was preaching. And he preached so long till there was a young man in the window. And the Bible said he preached from early until late. And all of a sudden, the man fell asleep and fell out of the window. The funny part is, Paul was preaching so long that the man fell down out of the window. It wasn't from now. I know in the text, the man died from falling. My question is, why is that in the Bible? That this man was, he, he fell asleep while Paul was preaching. I just know that we got all kinds of jokes about people falling asleep while people are preaching. Not me, of course, but while other people are preaching. Hold on. The man fell out of the window while Paul was preaching. See, we live in a modern age. I'm using Siri. Give me a scripture of a young man who fell out of the window when Paul was preaching. I found this on the web. It is 20. All right, go to Acts 20. I was, just, I was upset because I couldn't find it. Go back to Acts 20. I was reading too fast. Acts 20, look at verse 9. Ah, here it is. And on, let's start at verse 7. Upon the first day of the week, when we were gathered together for a break, Paul discoursed with them and intending to... That's not, that's not the one I want. Acts 20, verse 9. Oh, yeah, it is. And there was sat in the window a certain young man named Eutychus, born down with a deep sleep. And as Paul discoursed yet longer, being born down by a sleep, he fell from the third story and was taken up dead. Now, Paul went down, you know, we know that it, we, it wouldn't be a, a great story if, um, if the boy died there. But it was funny because God, Paul brought the boy back to life. But what's funny about it is the part of a preacher preaching so long that people go to sleep. That's just funny. Are y'all with me? And so I want you to know that God has a sense of humor to make a donkey talk, to make a blind man run from disciples and not shut up. He has a sense of humor that he can make boys chase after a ball, uh, call a man names, and then have where uh, a bear comes out the woods and attacks the, the young men. Well, we can go to Exodus 32. And these are stories I know because I look for humor in the Bible where uh, when Moses was up getting the Ten Commandments and they were down there with the golden calf, and God looked at Moses. Look what God said. Moses, go down there and get your people. They're not acting right. And then there's another exchange between God and Moses. And Moses said, uh, -uh they're all my people. They're your people. You brought them out of Egypt. These are situations to let you know there is humor in the Bible. And when we miss it, we miss a chance of healing and blessing because we can see the serious and we can see the blessing. So let me give you about five things to close this out. Maybe seven things to teach you how to be a person who can laugh at situations and not get yourself so messed up that you cannot laugh. Amen? It's like the man who told his friend, uh, he told his friend, he said, hey, I'm getting ready to divorce my wife. And his friend said, why are you divorcing your wife? He said, man, she ain't talked to me in six months. He said, man, you better keep her a wife like that hard to follow. That's funny. That man is funny. That is funny. I'm going to say something else. Here we go. The first thing, if you're going to be a person who knows how to laugh and make laughter a part of your spiritual walk, 
First thing is, refrain or retrain your imagination to look for humor. Some of the situations I just said, I described them to you in a humorous way because what you can do is retrain your imagination and have fun. And if here's the thing that I tell you. If you're the kind of person who can laugh at yourself, man, you bless yourself. If you get all upset when folk are laughing at you, but you want to laugh at everybody else, that means that you need to retrain your spirit to learn how to even laugh. Like you can tell you that that was so stupid. You might know what I'm talking about. Why did I do that? Tell somebody, somebody who's done that before, let that somebody know. I, I just tell them, there's some, how many of some things you've done that you just laugh at? What are you telling them about it? But sometimes the wife gets upset with me because I tell them in preaching. Because we all do crazy things. Like I was telling you about the lady who was talking on the cell phone. And she was reaching in her bag. And someone said, what are you doing? She said, I'm looking for my cell phone. She was talking on her cell phone. but she was. That was funny to me. Things that we do that make us laugh will bring us into a place where our whole life is going better. You need to laugh more. So retrain your imagination. The second thing is take inventory when you're in a painful situation. Look at the painful situation and say to yourself, how can I bring laughter into my life at this point? What's funny? If you say nothing's funny, you're missing the entire point of life. The laughter that you can bring to a painful situation can turn your life around. You know, maybe it's like uh, when, when you're in a hospital and a grandchild shows up and the grandchild says something funny and can't pronounce the word right. You may be in pain in a hospital, but you laugh and you let that laughter do like medicine in your spirit. Here's a good one. The third thing is, and I'm telling everybody to do this, spend time with people who have a sense of humor. A young lady stopped by our office who hadn't been here in a while. If she's listening tonight, she knows what I'm talking about. You made our day because you came in and you were laughing and we were talking about stuff, hadn't seen each other in a while, but the laughter made our, our stay or, or made the visit so much better because you came in and just made us laugh, made the work lighter. It was just a great day. I'm telling you, you had to quit hanging around with folk who don't know how to laugh because they, they'll, they'll get to the point where they always hold grudges um, and they'll never forgive because they don't know how to laugh even at themselves. And that's what we need to do. Second, fourth thing, write this down. Do not how do I say this right? Understand is a better way to say it. There is a connection between laughter and communication with God. I believe God will be so refreshed when we treat Him like God. When we admit stuff to Him, when we laugh at stuff to Him, when we talk to God, and we'll let God know, God, I know that was silly. Please forgive me. I don't know why I did that, but I'm just saying, when you come at God, there's going to be very tough times where you have to tell God in a very repentant mood. I know all about that. I know about sin time. But other times, just you and God walk and laugh. And you, you hear God saying, I don't know why it took you so long to understand what I was trying to say to you. Make sure you see that. Understand there's a connection. The next thing is, use laughter to attack when you're feeling defensive. I'm going to say that again. Use laughter so when someone's saying something to you that you don't like, when someone's trying to do something that you don't like, try to figure out how to enter in something funny into the conversation and you can break the whole conversation between you and the person. I've seen people in interaction sometimes with folk on the phone and if I, uh, I've seen other people do it where they get angry. I've learned that when I'm talking to somebody, I try to look for a way to say, hey, have a nice day. Whew, that sure was funny. When you, when you try to attack my defensiveness, okay, someone's laughing at me, all of a sudden my pride goes up, but if I can find a way to laugh also without getting hostile, it'll bring healing. Is anybody getting anything out of this? Put something in chat saying you're getting something out of this. Because this is an area... Matter of fact, it was Voltaire who said, uh, God is a frustrated comedian because he has an audience 
who never laughs. Oh, who's afraid to laugh. It was Voltaire who said that God is a frustrated comedian because he has an audience who's afraid to laugh. God has done some funny things in the Bible. He's done some funny things in our lives that we need to laugh at, right? Um, number six, take five to ten minute laugh break every day. Find something to laugh at. Find something to laugh at. Take a break. We take all kinds of other breaks. Take you a laugh break. Find something funny to read. Find something funny to make you laugh. Think back on a funny situation. Take you a laugh break. Number six. Find some funny things to celebrate. Ooh, here it is. In church. You know what? The devil comes in and we get so mad at people about things when God said we could find some humor or a way to celebrate because sometimes the people we like will laugh at a situation when people we don't like will turn it into a feud. We'll turn it into a she don't like me, he don't like me. And we get into all these things where if we just laugh together, God could have blessed us. Number eight, you ready? Practice laughing. Psalms 2. Not going to read it. You read it. It says God laughed. He laughed at them in derision. God laughed. So if God laughs and he's God, it must be okay for me to laugh. And the last thing is look for humor in the scriptures so that when you read your Bible, you can find something that will make you laugh. Amen? So, I'm closing tonight. If you got something out of this, please share with someone else. Uh, scriptures in the Bible, things that make you laugh, so that you can relieve and tear down some of the strongholds that the enemy has in your life. Uh, let's say that one more joke. Uh, how about the fact that there were four people on an airplane and he only had three parachutes. And so they were trying to figure out who could use the parachute. And there was a pastor, and there was a nurse, and there was a little boy, and then there was uh, another pilot that did that what came from the front of the plane was crashing, so the other pilot was back there. And they were trying to figure out how to use the parachute. All of a sudden, the preacher ran up, grabbed the parachute, and jumped out the airplane. And the pilot got so mad. That is horrible. Why would he do that? The little boy started laughing and said, don't worry. There's enough parachutes for all of us now. He said, what do you mean? He just took that. He said, no, he didn't. He jumped out with my book bag. Anyhow, learn how to laugh. This is Pastor Duncan. Hope I've made your, hope I brighten up your day and learn to brighten up somebody else's. See you next week. God bless.